Today I'm riding on Britain's fastest train, the South Eastern Javelin, taking a journey from St Pancras Station in the heart of London down to the quiet town of Ramsgate in the far southeast. I start my journey at St Pancras International, one of the many large train terminals of the capital. The Grand Station is most famous for the Eurostar that travels under the sea to France, Belgium and the Netherlands. I'm entering through the side entrance, which is right by the southeastern platforms. There are plenty of shops around and the departure boards look very nice, a lot better than the dot matrix displays almost every other British station has. The train is arriving in a few minutes, so it's time to head up to the platforms. To the left you can see a Eurostar that's going to Brussels, and here's the train to Ramsgate to come in on platform 12. We are due to depart St Pancras at 12.04 and we'll be stopping at Stratford, Ebbsfleet, Ashford, Folkestone West, Folkestone Central, Dover Priory, Martin Mill, Warmer, Deal, Sandwich and Ramsgate where this train will terminate. As everyone leaves from this train's previous journey, it's time to board for its next one. There is a large step up to the train, so people with reduced mobility will need assistance. Though that's the same on almost every other British train, sadly. I've taken seat 27 in carriage A, as it has pretty good window alignment and is close to the doors. This is a priority seat, but as there were only a maximum of three people in the carriage at one time, I didn't need to give the seat up. I'll do a seat review once we depart. Hopefully it's better than the Great Western Railway train I took home on the same day. Departure is on time at 12.04. Just a minute after leaving St Pancras, we are already in a tunnel that will go all the way to Stratford International. Time for a seat review. As far as aesthetics go, I think it looks pretty good. And there is a sturdy fold-down table with a cup holder, but a laptop can be a bit of a squeeze. There are three fold-down armrests per double seat. The padding is fairly good and ergonomic design as well, and the legroom is okay. Sadly there is only one three pin socket per double seat, but at least there is one USB and one USB-C as well. Overall a pretty decent seat. We have now arrived at Stratford International, not to be confused with the main Stratford station. This only gets service from South Eastern and the DLR. It was originally built for Eurostar to serve the station, but as the train operator had to cut costs they didn't end up serving the station. Eurostar requires passport and security like a plane, so the station is mostly built way too big for what it needed to be. It would be great to see Stratford International get more use in the future, though that seems unlikely right now. We haven't even left London yet, so it's time to speed along to Ebbsfleet. Ebb Street International, just like Stratford International, is called International without having international service. But unlike Stratford International, it actually used to get service from other countries with Eurostar. But that ended a few years ago for the same reason that Stratford International never got international service. Eurostar didn't have enough money to operate multiple stations in Britain with all the passport checks and security. I'm very sorry for making you unable to hear international ever again. <laughs> At this point I remembered there is free Wi-Fi. This is common on almost all British trains though. I would even say it's worse than lots of other trains as it has a data limit which I quickly went over by trying to watch a YouTube video that never ended up loading. You can still surf around online after passing the 100 megabyte limit but at a reduced connection quality. I ended up using data which worked much better. We are now pulling into Ashford International, another station that Eurostar used to serve. This southeastern javelin is made up of two six coach sets coupled together. They will now uncouple and the rear set will form a service to St Pancras while the front set will continue on to Ramsgate going through and stopping at lots of towns that don't need 12 coach trains serving them. Just as we leave, another javelin pulls into Ashford going to St Pancras. And I've got to say, from the outside the javelin trains look very good. Though a nice exterior won't hide the fact that the trains are quite shaky and the internal fittings don't seem to be very secure. At this point we leave HS1, Britain's first high-speed rail project linking St Pancras to the channel tunnel that the Eurostars run on. This opened in 2009 and was 18% over budget, still amazing compared to the HS2 disaster. Arriving at Folkestone West is a clear sign that after leaving HS1 things are going to get rural. We run at a much slower speed and makes the last leg of the journey take roughly three times longer than if HS1 went to Ramsgate. Now it's time to see how clean the toilet is. 
and the state of it is pretty appalling. As this is a very quiet train and it only took roughly 10 minutes to turn around at St Pancras, it's clear that the toilets weren't cleaned. Here's a montage of the last part of the journey. Welcome to Ramsgate. I would love to explore the town, but I have to jump right back on this train to get home before 10pm. If you enjoyed the video and want more videos like this, please consider liking and subscribing. Here's the info from my train journey. Full credit to realtimetrains.co.uk for this amazing info. Link in the description.